Hey guys, Mike from VKBoatandSleds.com here. Uh, we get a lot of questions of people asking us, you know, what should I do to um, to get my sled ready for the season? What should I check? So I'm gonna kind of go over a quick um, overview. This is probably not all inclusive, but at least we made some good pointers here. I'll probably miss a few things, so feel free to call me out on them. But um, what I've got here is I've got an 01 Edge XC SP 600. I'm just gonna kind of go through what I would do before the first time I rode it for the season. Um, first thing I'd do is I'd, if you haven't already stored it without the gas in it, I would drain any gas that's in it uh, and uh, put fresh fuel in it. The next thing I would do is take the carbs off the sled and clean them. I just made another video about that on how to clean uh, sled carbs, so go ahead and check that out if you like. Um, I'd also take your power valves off if your sled has power valves on them uh, whether it be a Skidoo or a Polaris or a Yamaha they, a lot of them have power valves take them off you should probably be cleaning these every thousand miles anyway depending on the kind of oil you're running but certainly can rob you of, uh, of some performance um, if you haven't stored your, your, your sled without the belt on it you might notice some corrosion up on the, the sheaves of the clutch uh, it's normal that's one reason you want to store it without the belt on it, take one of these scotch pads and just roughen up the surface. You don't want to really use sandpaper or anything. I wouldn't use anything more really more abrasive than one of these. Um, but that will clean off any any of the imperfections or anything you've got on the clutch. You can do it on, on both clutches as well. Some people like to oil their clutches. Um, if, if you oil it, I would use something real light like a 3-in-1 oil. Uh, open this clutch up with a screwdriver. Uh, careful not to get your fingers. They have a tool actually that opens this up. You put a block in there and it holds it open. But clean the rollers. Check make sure there's no flat spots on any of the three rollers. No flat spots on the weights. If you haven't had your clutch clean in the last couple thousand miles, it's probably worth cleaning them. A clean clutch will last you a whole lot longer than one with a bunch of belt dust in it. Uh, belt dust is abrasive and it will wear down the buttons, it'll wear everything down. So cleaning your clutch, taking it apart and actually cleaning it is, uh, is the number one way to maintain the clutch life uh, even more so than, than oiling it. Remember, oil attracts dust, so it's kind of a catch torn too. If you oil it, it could take all your belt dust to it and attract it to the sled. Um, what else? Obviously check your belt, make sure the belt's in good shape. What I always do every, you know, so many thousand miles or what, I take a belt that's slightly worn, use it as a spare, put a new belt on. Check your coolant level, check your plugs, you know, make sure they're nice, uh, good shape. Um, under the hood, that's probably about it. Again, run fresh fuel in it. Um, so you clean your carbs especially, which I recommend. You don't want to put an old fuel through it. Uh, one thing I should mention, there is a grease fitting there. There's also a grease fitting way down there where your speedometer cable is. Follow your speedometer cable in, and there's a grease fitting right on top of that the drive shaft. Those are pretty important. Remember, these things are spinning as fast as your motor is, so 9,000 RPMs. You want to make sure this stuff is greased. Um, seen some severe damage from lack of, lack of grease there. If you've got rebuildable shocks, they're probably good for about a season or two, depending on how you ride, where you ride, and how many miles. But certainly, uh, you could check for leaks in the shocks. Uh, if you don't see any leaks, they're probably fine. But again, rebuilding them will help. Check your carbides. You know, see what kind of life you got in those. Um, there's probably three or four grease fittings under here you're going to want to do. Usually at the top of the shock tower. There's one at pretty much every pivot point down here. So make sure you hit all those uh, those grease fittings. Um, check your torque arms. Make sure there's no cracks in them. Check your bogey wheels. Make sure all the bearings sound good. Um, bearings are cheap. They're easy to replace before the wheel goes bad. Bearing goes bad, it's going to take the wheel out and you're going to need a new wheel and bearing. Check your track tension. It's hard to tell here because it's sitting down. Um, your high facts. Usually there's a line on the high facts. You can kind of see it right there. Um, this one's probably due to be replaced. Remember, right here is probably going to be the thickest. Up here in the bend is where it's going to be the thinnest. So if it's thick back here, don't let it deceive you up here that it could be thinner. 
Hyfax are cheap, suspension rails aren't, so go ahead and replace those if you need to. Um, and that, just go through everything, make sure you don't have any, you know, studs that are ready to pull out and go through a heat exchanger. Uh, that could certainly take out your motor. <clears throat> Check your chain case oil. This one I, is empty right now, I just replaced the gears on this chain case. So, But if your uh, chain case has a magnet on it and it comes out fuzzy, it's completely normal. The gears on these things are just like differential gears. They're, they're made, they're stamped when they're made. So they look consistently loose shavings. So don't be alarmed if it looks like the, your gears are, um, your gears are spitting metal. It's, it is normal. Um, other than that, you know, check your <clears throat> your suspension. Make sure you've got no loose parts, um, time joints, etc. Your shocks. To me, the biggest thing is clean your carbs. Run fresh fuel through these things. Um, I personally run only 93 octane through them. Um, if you got any questions, if you need anything, uh, let us know. We sell parts, new use, aftermarket, and obviously OEM as well. So if we can help you, 815-363-1254. And if you got any questions about uh, any of these slides, because I know all these motors are different, um, feel free to give us a shout. Thanks, guys.